Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Noble and I'm a professional photographer and retoucher. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I use dodging and burning to retouch skin. This is one of the most important techniques to learn as a retoucher because it can have such an immense effect on your image without destroying any pixels. Here is the image after all my retouching has been done. Here is the folder with the dodging and burning inside. Let me toggle this off so you can see just how much this has helped the image. Okay, so we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. So I've deleted the folders with my retouching inside. The only layer that is left is my cleaning layer because I always do my dodging and burning after this. If you haven't seen that video on cleaning the skin, make sure to go and check it out so you can follow along with my workflow. So for those of you who aren't sure what the term dodging and burning means, it actually comes from a traditional darkroom technique that was used for correcting exposure on certain areas of a print. Dodging was used to lighten areas, while burning was used to darken areas. In the digital world, we can do the same thing using a few different techniques, and by darkening and lightening certain areas on our image, we can smooth out those uneven transitions in the skin. My favourite technique is by using curves adjustments. I like using this method because I can build up the effect gently, which reduces colour shifts. Also, I'm not destroying any pixels because I'm only painting with light and shadow above the pixels. This means you're working non-destructively and can reduce the effect at the end if you feel you've gone too far. So make sure you have your adjustments and properties panels open. You can head up to the window menu to find those, here and here, and come up to the adjustments panel and click on the icon that looks like a graph. This is your curves adjustment. Now this will add into the layers panel. So let's run through what this curves adjustment is showing us. We have a diagonal line here, and this is representing your image's tonal range. By moving the diagonal line, I can control the brightness of my image. I'm working with an RGB image, so the upper right area of the graph represents the highlights, and the lower left area represents the shadows. For a CMYK image, this would be reversed, so the highlights would be at the bottom left, and the shadows would be at the top right. So to add a control point, I just have to click on the line, and to delete it, I can just drag the point off the graph. So for an RGB image, if I pull the curve up, I'm adding light. So you can see my image is getting brighter. If I pull the curve down, I'm removing light, so it's getting darker. If this was a CMYK image, the reverse would be true. So dragging the curve upward would add ink, making it darker. Let's create a curve adjustment for my dodging. I'll add a control point in the middle, which means I'm going to affect the midtones of my image, and I'll lift it up slightly. I'm not pulling this up very high because if I do, I'll start to see color shifts. Also, I can add as many of these curves adjustment layers as I want, so I can build up the effect. On the curves adjustment, you'll see a white box. This is a mask. When it's set to white, it means it's revealing the curves adjustment. So this is why I can see the effect the curves adjustment is having on my image. If I invert this by pressing Command or Control I, then the mask turns to black, and this means the effect is now hidden. I want to have this hidden so that I can use my brush to paint over the mask to reveal the effect and brighten up certain areas of my image. Let me show you. I'll choose my brush from the toolbar and make sure I have white in the swatch so that I can remove the black mask. Let me increase my flow so you can really see the brush strokes. Now when I start painting, I'm revealing the curves adjustment, which is brightening my image in turn. You can also see your brush strokes appear on the mask. Let's undo this by pressing Command or Control Z, and I'll rename the layer Dodge. Now let's create the Burn Curves Adjustment. I'll go up to the Adjustments panel and choose another Curves Adjustment. I'll add the control point in the same place, but this time I'm going to pull the curve down slightly, so we're darkening our image. I'll go and select the mask, and again invert this by holding Control or Command and pressing I. Now the darkening effect is hidden, and I'll rename the layer Burn. 
Now we can create a layer to help us see those uneven transitions a bit better. First we want to make the image black and white because without colour your eye can see these uneven transitions a lot more easily. Go and select the hue saturation adjustment here. Now move the saturation slider down to minus 100 and set your blending mode to colour. I'll rename this desaturation. If you find you need a little extra help, you can create another curves adjustment and add a control point in this area and just lift it slightly. Now change the blending mode to screen and this will show you those darker areas a bit more easily. When it comes to burning, if you need some help seeing those brighter areas, you can now change this blending mode to multiply. Okay, so let me change this back to screen. I'll lower the opacity because it's maybe a bit too bright and I'll now add these into a group called help so we're nice and organized. So now let's see my brush settings. There are a few different ways you can set your brush settings for dodging and burning. I use a method which takes into account my pen pressure. So if I push down harder, more paint will flow out of my pen. If you're not so confident using pen pressure, because it takes time to learn how to control this, I'll give you another set of brush settings you can use, so try both and see what works for your technique. Open up the brush panel by going up to the window menu. I have my transfer selected, and in both drop downs I have this set to pen pressure. I also have my build up and smoothing selected. I'll head up to my brush size. Now this will always be changing to match the area that I'm working on, but I usually work on the larger areas first, so I'll set this to 50 as a good starting point. My hardness is set to 0%, so this is a really soft brush. My opacity is set to 100%, and my flow is set at around 10%. I'll never alter the opacity, but I may reduce or increase the flow depending on the area I'm working on. My airbrush is also selected. Now I want to save this brush so I can toggle between them really quickly and save myself a lot of time. I'll go up to the window menu and select tool presets. I already have this open down here. I'll create a new tool preset. Make sure my include color is checked and give it a descriptive name like D&B soft 10% flow. I can create multiple tools here for my dodging and burning so I'm speeding up my workflow. Now let's create the brush for those of you who may not be as comfortable using the pen pressure. I'll open up the brush panel again, and all we have to do is turn transfer off to remove the pen pressure. We also need to turn off the airbrush. Now this brush is much stronger than the other one because I'm not able to control it with my pen pressure. I'll reduce the flow to 1%. Now save this brush just as we did before, and I'll call this D&B Hard 1% Flow. I recommend you try both of these settings and see what works best for you and your technique. I'll switch back to the brush I use which has pen pressure turned on. I'll go and select the mask on my dodge layer. I'll make sure I have my swatch filled with white so while I'm painting I'm removing the black mask and revealing the effect. I start with the larger areas first because if I zoom in and start working on the micro dodging and burning, I might be doing more work than is really needed. Working globally first is going to remove those bigger issues and you may find that you don't need to remove a lot of the smaller things because of this. My brush size is going to match the area I'm working on or be just a little bit smaller and I'm working in a more painterly way, building up the brush strokes. Down on her neck, she has a very strong crease line, so if I find I can't remove this with the first dodging curves adjustment, I can just add another one and build up the effect. When I feel like I've done as much as I can do at this zoom level, then I'll start to go in closer. Also, always think about the final output of the image, so you know at what level of detail you need to be working at. If this was going to be printed at large scale, then I need to work much closer. If it's just for web, then I don't need to zoom in so close and remove everything because no one will ever see this. Also, there's such a thing as over dodging and burning, so keep zooming out to check on your progress. 
It takes time to train your eye with this technique, but the more you practice, the quicker you will get. Another really important thing to discuss is understanding bone structure and knowing what shadows to leave. If you start removing shadows that are actually meant to be there, because they're sculpting a person's face, then the image will look very flat and fake. For example, people have a tendency to remove the dark areas under the eyes. Reducing the shadows is fine, but there has to be some shadow there because there's a spherical shape, the eye behind the skin. If I remove all of the shadow, the model will look very odd. Another area to be careful around is the mouth and cheeks. These shadows at the corners of her lips can be reduced, but not removed completely. Same with this cheek line. There are bones underneath here, and if you remove these shadows, then the face has no dimension and looks very fake. I'd recommend looking in magazines with beautiful fashion and beauty images, so you have references to follow and you know what you're working towards. Okay, so let me do all my dodging and I'll show you the results after we speed through this. Okay, so I've done all my dodging. Here is the before and the after. As I mentioned earlier, you will see colour shifts after your dodging and burning. A really cool thing using curves adjustments is that you can clip any other adjustment into this layer and it will only affect your painted areas. Because my dodging has increased the saturation in those areas, I'll come up to the adjustments panel and choose the hue saturation adjustment. Now I'll come down in between this hue saturation layer and the curves adjustment layer and hold down my Alt or Option key. My cursor will change to an arrow. Now if I click on my pen or mouse, this hue saturation adjustment is now clipped into my mask. Now I'll reduce the saturation and it will only show through in the areas I painted. Let me zoom in to show you the before and after. So the saturation is stronger in those areas that were much darker and needed more dodging, under her eye for example. Okay, so now I can move on to the burning. I'll change the blending mode of my help layer to multiply to see those bright areas more clearly. I'll make sure I'm on my burn mask. So I'm just looking for the larger areas to begin with and then I'll zoom further in to do my micro dodging and burning. So let's speed through this and I can show you my results when I've done all my burning. So I finished all my burning. Here is the before and the after. Now let's see the before and after of all my dodging and burning combined. The beauty of using curves adjustments is that this is a non-destructive technique and you haven't touched any pixels. So if you felt you've gone too far, you can even reduce the opacity of these layers to bring back more texture. After I've cleaned the skin, I would then use my dodging and burning to add more depth and contour the image. This is called Global Dodging and Burning, and I'll be creating a new video to show you that process, so stay tuned for that. Once all my dodging and burning is complete, I'm ready to move on to the next part of my retouching process, which is correcting colour issues. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be sharing the rest of my retouching process in other videos, so please subscribe to my channel for updates, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and share the video. Have a great day. Thank you.